Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this counter project using the matrix display and the Arduino Uno. And we will not be using libraries that you would usually use when working with those displays. Instead, we will use the U8G2 library that is designed for mainly for bigger displays for the OLED displays, but it also works with this matrix display and it gives us much more freedom compared to using the standard libraries. So let's get started. So here is an image that originally sparked my interest and it's from the U8G library which shows different displays that could be used with this library and it's a proof that you can use this kind of display with the Arduino Uno and you can even see the initialization line down here. However, you don't need it because on this page you can actually see the example code for the Max 7219 display which is the display that we have so we can use this as a starting point. But before we do so, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video which is a PCB way and not only you can get PCBs, you can also get CNC machining or for example 3D printing, which is something that I would like to try very soon. I have this 3D printed logo and I'm just amazed by the quality. So yeah, definitely something for the next video. Anyway, let's get back to our project. As usual, we will be using the Wokwi, which is a free online Arduino emulator. And if I open the documentation and open the diagram reference, you can see that there is this display. So the Max 7 to 19 is included in the emulator. If I open the examples down below, you can see that all of those are using different libraries. So this one is using library MD Perola or perhaps maybe the Max 7 to XX, not the U8G2 library as we are trying to use. So instead of starting from the examples, we will start with a blank sketch. So I'll go back to the Wokwi main page scroll down and find the start from scratch and start with Arduino Uno. I will jump back to the GitHub for the sample code, copy this into a clipboard and paste it into our sketch. And since we are using the U8G2 library, we need to make sure that this is included in our sketch. So go to library manager, click the plus icon and type in U8G2 and add this to our project. Then jump back to our sketch and we need to of course add the display. So I will click the plus icon and type in 72 and this is the LED matrix display that will be added. And it already includes the four different units. So it's matching the display that I have. We need to connect it to Arduino of course. So the VCC or V plus will go to the five volts, which is down here. The ground will go to ground. So for example, down here there is also ground up here the next pin is din which is a data in so the data is number 12 so it will go to pin number 12 the next one is cs which is chip select that's pin number 10 and the last one is clk which is clock and that should be connected to pin number 11 the last thing that we need to do is look at the initialization and there are two different initializations. One is for the 32 by 8 and one is for 16 by 16 where the four units are in the square shape and this one is in like the rectangular shape which is this case. So I'll comment out this one and uncomment this one and try to press the run button and start the simulation. And we do see something on the display which is great but the message U8G2 seems to be flipped. And that's because the individual 8x8 units could be connected in a few different ways. And thankfully the Vokwe emulator supports different layouts. So if I jump to the layout section, you can see that it could be either parallel or FC16. And there is a little bit of explanation going in here. And it's saying that, you know, the units from AliExpress, which is the one that I have, are usually in the FC16. So I, what I will do is I will set the layout to FC16. So I'll jump back to our sketch, go to diagram. And for this entry, I will add a new property. So the layout should be set to FC16 and if I restart the simulation now it's displayed properly. If I jump back to the documentation you can also change the color if you want so I can also add a new property for the color and maybe make it blue or white. I think that the white looks nice. Finally that's the only version that I physically don't have. Now let's simplify the code because there are still some pieces that we don't really need. So for example this section is for the hardware SPI and the hardware I2C connection but our connection is purely software based so we can just get rid of those lines as well as this initialization and here in the loop we are drawing the U8G2 text but on the second line we are drawing the ABCD. Obviously there is no second line so we can get rid of this one and we can try something else. So for example changing the font. Now if we were not using the U8G2 library this would be quite hard because we would have to design those from scratch for example using this online editor but in our case it's much easier because we can just search for U8G2 fonts open this website and here search for the font list which is 3 to 8 pixel height because our display is 8 pixel height and I will most likely go with 7 pixel height and choose one of the fonts that I like for example this U8G2 font squeezed B7 copy it in our code and in a set font function I will just use this font instead and maybe to make this slightly different instead of writing U8G2 I will write hello world or at least hello. Let's rerun the simulation and hopefully we'll see a different message in a different font. 
which seems to be the case. Now let me show you how to run this sketch on the real Arduino. So I'll jump to Arduino IDE and paste our code. And since we are using the UHG2 library, we have to make sure that this library is being installed. So I'll go to sketch, include library, manage libraries. In here, type in UHG2 and press the enter key. Scroll down a little bit. And this one is the one that you want to install. So click the install button. After that, go to tools, board, and make sure the correct board is being selected. In my case, it's Arduino Uno and correct port is being selected. That's of course different for everyone's case. After that, click the upload button and hopefully in a while you will see this running on the real Arduino. And depending on the used display, the message could be red or maybe green, but it can be blue as well. Actually, it could be also white, but unfortunately I don't have the display yet. If the display is too bright, you can change the value in the set contrast function in the setup function and it goes from 0 to 255. Now at this point I would like to create some sort of preview of what I want to display on this matrix display and for that I will be using Photopia which is a free online editing tool like Photoshop. So in here I will create a new document, so file new in the size of 32 by 8 pixels and the background should be black. Click the OK button or actually the create button and this will create a very very tiny image so I will have to zoom in as much as I can. And today I actually want to see the pixel grid so I will jump to view, show the pixel grids so I can see the boundaries of those individual pixels. I will create a new layer by clicking this new layer icon, select the pencil tool which is hidden behind the brush tool, make sure it's only one pixel sized and then select the white color by clicking this double arrow icon so now the white color is the foreground color. I want to create something that looks like the YouTube logo so maybe something like this and I try different sizes. I like the size where I only take like you know the first seven pixels and keep the last line empty and of course I want to have some kind of triangle inside and I can either delete those pixels using the eraser tool or I can just switch colors back to black so the black is now the foreground color and draw it with the black pixels instead so black color instead like so and I can switch between black and white by pressing the x key on my keyboard so now it's white now it's black if I select the rectangle selection tool I can measure that the size of the icon is 8 by 7 pixels which leaves the empty space for the text to be 24 pixels so if I want to show six digit that means that for each digit we only have four pixels and if you want to have a one space in between those digits we only have three pixels per digit but that should still be enough so i will try to aim for digit that is only three pixels wide so again i'll select the pencil tool and try to draw some digits starting with digit number one that could look like this continue with digit number two and so on and so on And you can of course decide if you prefer those square digits or if you perhaps want to have something more rounded. For example, something like this. I actually like the square digits more. So now it's time to test this on the actual display. So for that, I will export the image by going to File, Export as PNG Image, give it some meaningful name, and click the Save button, which will download this into your Downloads folder. Once this image is downloaded, we need to convert it to the C array. And for that, we can use, for example, the image to CPP website. So I will drag this PNG image into the Choose Files, and you can see a very small preview in here. Everything could be left to default. So I'll just click the Generate Code and copy this generated code into our sketch. So for example, in here, I will paste the code and I only need this array so I can get rid of this one and I want to of course draw this image to our display so I will comment out drawing the string and instead of drawing the string I want to draw the image. For that I will be using the draw bitmap function which requires the x and y position, the number of bytes in the horizontal direction, the height of the bitmap and finally the pointer to the UHG2 structure, actually you know to the array of those individual bits. So in the sketch I will type in u8g2.drawbitmap. The x should be 0, the y should be 0, the width divided by 8 is of course 32 divided by 8 and the height is 8 pixels and finally the image is this EPB bitmap matrix display counter which is just the name I've chosen. So let's restart the simulation and see what we got. And you can see that we have this interesting looking animation but that's definitely not what we want to see on the display. And the reason why we don't see our image is because the image is stored in the program memory but the draw bitmap function is not looking into the program Program memory. In the UHG1 library, there was a possibility to call the draw bitmap p function that will look into the program memory. This function is unfortunately not present in the UHG2 library, so what we can do instead is to move this image from the program memory outside, just like that by just deleting the program memory word. And if I restart the simulation now, I can finally see the image displayed on the matrix display. And I have to say that I do like how it looks like. So this will be our starting point, but we of course want to make this dynamic so those individual digits will be dynamic and could be changing, maybe with some kind of animation. 
and for that we need to separate the YouTube logo from the individual digits and there are of course multiple ways how to do that we can just export this image and use the image to CPP website but I want to show you a different way how to do that and that is simply by typing the individual bits it might be a good idea to lower the opacity of this YouTube logo by dragging the opacity slider more to the left side so we can easily count those individual pixels then we can copy our previous array but this time rename it to YouTube logo and the deleted content and instead of typing in those hexadecimal numbers we can also type in individual bits by saying capital B and then typing zeros and ones so it will be zero for this pixel and then one two three four five six ones so one two three four five six ones and the zero for that pixel and then the new line will be similar so three white pixels so capital B three ones one zero and four ones and so on and so on just like this so instead of drawing this full screen image let's only draw the youtube bitmap logo and we have to change the size which is now 8 divided by 8 for the width and the 7 for the height and after restarting the simulation we only see the logo now after that we need to find the uhg2 font which has the digits 3 pixel wide and i think that this one is looks suitable as well as maybe this one so let's start with for example this one so i'll copy the name and paste it in our code in the set fold function and of course we want to write something so we'll just move this after drawing this image and let's show the string 1 2 3 5 4 6 on the position 8 and 7 now the 7 is for the y position but it's not for the top left it's for the baseline so i believe this position is right but we will see once we retire the simulation and it looks like the position x should be 9 not 8 so we see a very similar preview but now we can actually change those individual digits the thing is we don't want to draw all the digits at the same time because we want to animate those individually on the y position so we need to introduce some kind of loop and we probably need some kind of variable that will hold all those individual digits let's create the new variable called digits and this will be an array that will store all our individual digits so we need six entries and we can probably just pre-fill it with some values so let's make it different and say for example six five four three two one and since those individual digits will only go up to ten i think we are fine using the byte variable for this one we cannot draw the number variable directly to the screen but we first need to convert it to a c style string so we will need a helper variable that will be type of character and it will be the array of characters let's call this digit care we pretty much only need two entries so the first one will be for the actual digit and the second one will be for null which sets the end of the string so inside the loop function we want to create a new loop for drawing those individual digits and it's probably a good idea to go from the last digit to the first digit so we'll set for integer i equals 5 while the i is bigger than 0 let's decrease the y let's convert the number to the c style string by calling the i to a function and this function requires a number which is our digit so it will be a digit with the index of y the helper buffer which is the digit character and finally the type of the number which in the case is a decimal number and we can draw this using the draw string function so let's just draw this in the loop and instead of drawing this string we will actually draw the digit character for each digit we need to increase the x value so it will be 9 plus i times 4 because the 4 is the width of the digit after running the simulation we don't see the first digit and that's because inside our loop we need to say if the i is bigger or equal to 0 and that should fix it so now we see a different numbers based on those digit array let's move to some fun stuff and that is animating those digits around and for that we need to have some variable or actually the array that will hold the offset and we will also use the byte array which we will call it by digits offset and let's call those pers for percentage because we will store a percentage it will also have six entries and for now let's just make those all zeros so again the percentage offset will go from zero to hundred and then we will convert it to actual pixel offset later on so inside our loop we want to find out if the percentage offset is bigger than zero so we will say that if the digits offset percentage for the selected digit is bigger than zero that means that we want to animate this digit and we will animate it by simply increasing this value so we will say that this value equals the same value plus for example 20 for now we will change this value later on we also want to say that if this value is bigger or equal to 100 that means that the animation is complete and we need to of course switch to the next digit so first things first we need to set this back to zero so the offset will be back to zero so no animation and the digit which is the variable digits should be increased by one now of course this digit could go over 10 which is something that we don't want so we will say that if the digit equals 10 then we will set it back to zero now we have the offset but again it goes between zero and hundred and we only want to offset the digit by maximum maybe eight or perhaps nine pixels so for that we will create a new variable but this time it will be float and let's call it y offset and so after we animate everything we want to calculate the y offset and that will be based on of course this digit offset percentage we will divide it by hundred so it will only go between zero and one and then 
then we want to multiply it by the actual number of pixels so for example 8 pixels and it might be a good idea to just round it everything so inside our drawing loop when we draw the string we want to set the y position to be 7 minus the y offset because we want this digit to move upwards if I restart the simulation nothing happens because all the offsets are set to zero so let's just try to do a quick test by setting those for example to one and now when I restart the simulation those digits should actually move upwards and then switch to the next digit just like that so you can see that the 654321 switched to 765432 and as you can see we are missing something so we, when we are animating those digits we should actually draw two digits so we should draw this one digit but also the next one so the next one is already moving into the place for that we will need an array for storing the c style string and we can call this digit character next then scroll down for converting those to the c style array so this one and we want to convert the digits y plus one so the next digit into the digit character next now the digits y plus 1 could go over 9 it could be 10 as well which is something that we don't want and we can fix it for example by using the module function so if we use a modular function by 10 that will always give us number between 0 and 9 and of course we want to draw this so we'll copy this drawing string function and this time we will draw the digit character next and the y position will be offset by 8 so we'll say plus 8 now if you are wondering why i haven't used the same module function in here when it goes over 10 it's just i think that this one looks more readable okay so after i restart the simulation i can click the restart button on the arduino board and now we can see this animation going from the previous letter to the next digit it's very slow because the delay is set to one second between those frames if i lower it for example to 100 or 400 the animation will be playing much faster for example like this let's set the offset backs to zero so all the digit offset percentage let's set them to zeros and let's add a different way how to increase the last digit and that will be for example with the button so i'll stop the simulation click the plus icon and add the push button and maybe move it around here and we will connect the ground so one of those will go to ground together with some of the digital pins so for example pin number seven but you know you can use other pins as well in the setup function we want to define this pin to be the input so we'll set the pin mode for pin number seven to be input but actually input pull up and then it will mean that if nothing is connected if the button is not being pressed it will report the height state and if we press the button it will report the low state so inside our loop let's add a simple statement saying that if the digital read of the pin number seven is low that means that the button is pressed and if at the same time animation is not playing so the digit offset percentage for the last digit which is digit number five equals zero in that case we want to play the animation by simply setting this variable to 20. if i restart a simulation and i press this button i should see the animation going from one to digit number two and if i press it again i should see it going to number three and so on and so on and what i can probably do is to remove the delay completely now the animation is playing super fast so i probably want to also decrease the increment for the animation and let's just set it to two instead of 20. so now when i press the button i see a smooth animation of the next digit animating inside however when i go to the eight and the nine and back to zero it goes to zero but it doesn't increase the left digit which is something that we of course want to do so inside our loop function we will look for the value of the digit currently animated digit and if the digit is number nine animating into number zero we will also switch the previous digit so inside the here let's say that if the current digit equals nine and at the same time if the previous digit is not animating yet which means that the previous digit so i minus one equals zero in that case we want to animate this so we'll set the i minus one equals two and now when i press the button and i go over nine so five six seven eight now i press the nine and now i press the button again it should be animating both the nine and the two into three so let's see if it works and it seems to be working now if you want to test this more you can of course change the default value to be something different for example zero zero nine 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 eight so pressing the button once will go to nine 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 and pressing it again will go to thousand now let's talk about the movement because right now the digits move in the linear fashion which is kind of boring because that's not how the objects move in the real world usually there is some kind of acceleration or deceleration going on so let's try to see how we can spice it up a little bit and so to visualize the movement i will be using desmos which is a free online graphic calculator and it looks like this so let's say that for example the x-axis is our time and the y-axis is position so currently the position equals time so the y equals x and let's just limit this into the range of 0 and 1 i'll tell you why in a minute so i will say that the 0 is smaller or equal to 
x, which is more or equal to 1. And I will zoom in so I can see it better. So now it goes between 0 and 1. Again, this kind of movement is quite boring. So what we can do is we can try to use the power function. So let's create a new expression saying that y equals x raised to something. I'll open the keyboard and raise it to the exponent of, for example, p. And it asks me if I want to add a slider. Of course I do. I will also limit this to between 0 and 1 and most likely change the color so we can see what's what. So this one might be violet. So with the exponent of 1, nothing has changed, but if I change it to a different number, for example to some positive number, you can see that our curve is changing as well. And so what this means is for this curve, as I increase the time when I'm, for example, at the 50% of the time, the value is still only at like 15%. So it means that the movement will be very slow in the beginning, and it will suddenly jump to the final position of 1, 1. And the main reason why we are sticking into the range of 0 to 1 is because 0 to any exponent is 0, and 1 to any exponent is 1. However, I want to control the speed in the opposite way, so I'll drag the slider more to the left side to have curve like this. So in the beginning, when we are progressing through time, the value jumps quite a lot. So for example, here at like 20% of the time, we are already at half the distance. So in the beginning, it jumps very quickly, but then it suddenly slows down until we, again it reaches the final destination. But you know, here it's moving very slowly. So this is something that I would like to see for our digits movement. So let's see how we can replicate it in our code. So this line is the red curve, basically a linear near curve just a straight line and we want to add some easing so we'll say that the y offset equals power function and we want to use the power function of this digit offset percentage divided by 100 which will go between 0 and 1 and we want to raise it to 0 0.4 so this is our exponent in here 0 0.4 and that will also give us a number between 0 and 1 but the distance that should be traveled by the digit should be 8 pixels so we'll multiply it by 8 and it might be a good idea to just round everything we don't need this line so i'll come it out and when i restart the simulation and press the button now the digit will jump jump very quickly and then slow down like this so it jumps very quickly and you can see it even better when I click the button one more time. So again it's very fast in the beginning and then it slows down when it tried to reach the final destination. And it looks great when I press the button from time to time but if I keep the button pressed it kind of doesn't look that great because there is a big difference between the start speed and the end speed and so there is a sudden speed change. So instead of using the power function, we can maybe use a different function, for example, the sine or cosine function that will give us smoother change in speed. So let's jump back into Desmos and see how we can use the cosine function to smooth this curve out. So I will say y equals cosine of the x-axis. And of course, it's very wide because the frequency is pi. So it's 314 between those individual ways. So I want to multiply it by pi. So open the keyboard and multiply it by pi. And I want to, of course, limit this between 0 and 1 like the other functions. But now it goes in the y direction between minus 1 and 1. So what I want to do is divide it by 2 and add 0 0.5 to move it to the top. The curve is still flipped on the y direction. So what I will do is I will say 1 minus our equation and that should fix it. So now we have a different curve that's a slow in the beginning then it speeds up and it also slows down by the end of the transition by the end of the animation so we'll create a new formula for the y offset and this time it will be cosine function of the digit offset percentage divided by 100 so this is going from 0 to 1 multiplied by p which is 3 point whatever and we want to divide it by 2 and at 0.5 and of course use the 1 minus this equation so 1 minus this equation and multiply it by 8 pixels again it might be a good idea to round everything and so when we restart the simulation there is still some dynamic movement but when i press the button and keep it pressed it looks more natural and here is a side by side comparison of the linear movement on the left side and our custom easing function on the right side just in case if you are wondering if there is any visual difference at all yeah there is quite a lot of difference you can see that when it goes to the next digit it slows down for a fraction of a second whereas this one is just moving all the time there is one more change that i would like to make and it is when the number goes over 10 especially for multiple digits i would like to be some sort of delay in between those animations and so that's happening in this part of the code so we can add one more logic statement and we can say that we will not start animating the previous digit until the current digit reaches some value so let's for example say we will not animate it until it will be bigger than for example 20 the current digit animation so if i run the simulation and click the button when four digits are being switched there is some small delay in between those individual digits and you can of course play with this value and but kind of like it the way it is right now so here is the project running on the real arduino as you can see i've added this prototyping shield to have access to the small breadboard on which i've added the button 
but I've also added the simple potentiometer which controls the brightness of the display because by default the red one and especially the blue one is very bright. On the other hand the green one is somehow dimmed. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get the white one hopefully next time. And that's all for today's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions please put those out in the comment section and I hope to see you next time. Thanks and bye.